Hi, welcome to the Hungarian Living Podcast. I'm your host, Elizabeth Sebo Voss. Our goal is to discover, celebrate, and share Hungarian heritage and encourage you to do it too. We'll touch on food, travel, history, music, and language, and share stories from our listeners. We're glad you're here. This is a podcast where we'll encourage you to dig deeper to learn about your Hungarian heritage in a variety of ways. We'll have thought provoking conversations and share resources. So whether you know a little or a lot about being Hungarian, this is the place to be. Hi, I'm Liz, and you might have already noticed that I don't have a Hungarian accent. I was born and raised in the United States. My parents were born and raised in the United States, and while Hungarian was their first language, I'm pretty sure it wasn't mine. Most of my grandparents actually grew up in the United States because they came to the U.S. as children with their parents, some as early as 1904. So, while my Hungarian lineage is pretty strong, it has been almost 100 years since my most recent grandparent came to the United States. It shouldn't surprise anyone that I'm not fluent in Hungarian. But I do suspect my great-grandparents would be surprised that even some of their great-great-grandchildren have studied Hungarian. Our two youngest daughters have been working on their Hungarian for a number of years and even studied Hungarian in Debrecen in their summer school program, the Debrecen in Yadi Ejetem. And now that we have our own grandchildren, the awareness of Hungarian foods, language, and culture has already begun with this next generation. You might know me through Madra Marketing, the Hungarian store. We often travel to Hungarian events and have been to Boston, Pittsburgh, Ligonier, Pennsylvania, Atlanta, Georgia, Sarasota, Florida, Daytona Beach, Florida, Taylor, Michigan, Chicago, Illinois, Cleveland, Ohio, New Brunswick, New Jersey, Phoenix, Arizona, just to name a few. Going to Hungarian festivals and events is one of our favorite things to do because we get to meet a lot of people face to face. But for right now, I want to talk about the word Magyar. Magyar is the Hungarian word for Hungarian. It is spelled M-A-G-Y-A-R. And if you don't already know how to pronounce it, I'm going to give you a little hint. First of all, that G-Y in the center is actually a letter in the Hungarian language. And it has a sound that is similar to the DG in the word edge. I like to teach the pronunciation of Magyar to people using two words we are familiar with saying in English. Mud and jar. Using this phonetic approximation, say mud and jar as close together as possible, and you will come up with a very close replica of the word mudjar. Say it a few times. Mud, jar, mud jar, mud jar, mud jar. Yeah, the spelling is different than the phonetic hint, but that is for another day. A related word is mudjarosag. You might have seen that word on a map or on a document. You can hear the mudjar in the beginning, Remember that Magyar means Hungarian. And then the second part of the word is Orsag, which means the country of. So Magyarorsag means the country of the Hungarians. It is the Hungarian word for Hungary. So if you didn't know any Hungarian before, congratulations. Now you know two important words, Magyar and Magyarorsag. Little by little, you can increase your vocabulary. But this isn't a podcast about Hungarian language, although we will touch on it from time to time. Our goal here is to talk about how we as a group maintain and celebrate Hungarian heritage while living outside of Hungary. Are there things you miss? Are there things you feel you missed out on? There are Hungarians scattered all around the world, and the traditions may look a little different in each place, but we are united by blood, and that's a part of what makes us a community. And let's not forget those who are Hungarian by heart. There are some people who have been grafted into Hungarian heritage through marriage, friendship, or just an affinity for the Hungarian people, language, or culture. They are often big champions for the Hungarian cause in any number of ways. Like the non-Hungarian wife who patiently learns her husband's favorite Hungarian dishes from her mother-in-law so she can keep him surrounded by his Hungarian comfort food. Or my husband, Don, who now knows more about being Hungarian than being Dutch and German, which is his background, because he has been grafted into Hungarian living through my family's food and traditions and attending so many Hungarian festivals in the U.S., as well as traveling extensively in Hungary. Because I use my husband's last name, I am a hidden Hungarian. If I didn't add in my maiden name, Subo, you wouldn't know that I have Hungarian heritage. 
I know there are many hidden Hungarians out there due to name changes. Now, I don't know that everyone has to change their last name to just to reflect their heritage, but it is something to keep in mind. You may very well be talking to somebody who's Hungarian, and you have no idea. We know there are Hungarians all around the world and in many countries. Maintaining a culture outside of the country of origin is difficult, but it is important to do what we can with what we have. Where in the world are you, and what do you do to maintain Hungarian culture in your family? We would love to know. Drop us a note at podcast at hungarianliving.com and let us know where you are listening from and one of the Hungarian traditions that has continued in your family line. Throughout this podcast, I will share bits and pieces about my story, and I hope it gets you thinking about your story. I would like to encourage you to share your story with your family or friends. It is important to take time to think about our story and write it down, but it is also important to ask others about their story. Do you have a living parent, grandparent, aunt, or uncle with Hungarian heritage? I encourage you to ask them a question or two about growing up Hungarian. Decide how you can help them preserve their memory. It can be written, audio recorded, or video recorded. Or it can just be shared over a cup of coffee and a delicious Hungarian pastry. In fact, maybe you can ask them about their favorite Hungarian foods. That is usually a great conversation starter because a lot of lasting memories are connected to food. You might even consider making a family favorite Hungarian recipe so that others can join in on the wonderful aromas and taste. However it happens, taking time to connect and listen and share stories is a wonderful way to learn and grow. We all have something to share, and sometimes we just need a little encouragement. Hungarian Living is a division of Mudyar Marketing, the Hungarian store, where you can find meaningful gifts with Hungarian style. Check us out at mudyarmarketing.com. And special thanks to Stephen Chichek and the Animal Cannibals for the show music. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode of Hungarian Living, please subscribe and share this podcast with your favorite Hungarian. Check out our show notes for links to resources mentioned in this episode. If you have a question or comment, email us at podcast at hungarianliving.com. We'll catch you next time.